Welcome everybody about my next video about the Bugatti Bolide. Just one day after my video of the prototype, the car was officially presented and now we have a lot of detailed shots to analyze. So in this video I want to analyze the front. But first of all, in general, I was quite surprised that they are using the W16 drivetrain, something that we well know from the Bugatti Chiron. And it also explains the white greenhouse that I was wondering about in the last video because we have the massive dual-clutch gearbox which sits in front of the engine in this arrangement and it's sitting between the passengers, so that's the reason why the greenhouse is pretty wide in this prototype. Um, another thing is that I didn't expect a huge water radiator in front, but actually there are two big water radiators in front. That's something we will look at uh, a little bit more in detail later. Um, but the position of the intercoolers and the position of the uh, oil radiators was as I predicted as we will see later. In this picture we can see the two big water radiators either side and the front. I was a bit surprised that they are using the drivetrain of the Chiron, um, but given it's the same drivetrain as there with 16 cylinders and with a dual clutch gearbox and the Chiron is using 10 radiators, it's no surprise that they need that much cooling here in this car. I expected a smaller drivetrain or a smaller internal combustion engine with some electrification here. And, um, but it's still nice that they use the 16 cylinders and four turbochargers in this. It's still a great package. Um, water pipes are running either side of the side impact structure. We can see it very nicely in this shot. There are two pipes either side and they run through the side impact structure of the car. The collectors of the radiators are on the upper and lower position. And the upper collectors get thicker towards the center, which means that the connector must be on the on the center side, which is covered by the uh, shroud on top and um, by the crash box. The water flows through the radiators vertically, and that means to me that there are two possibilities. So um, both top collectors could be connected with each other, which means that um, it's a double eye flow radiator arrangement, so one radiator would be cooler than the other. One is taking the intake, one is the outtake. Um, the second possibility is that given that we see that there are two pipes either side of the car running to the front, it's highly likely that every one of the two radiators has its own inlet and outlet pipe, so they run in parallel. That would make more sense because then both radiators would run at the same higher temperature, which would um, create more cooling performance. One thing that's very interesting in this shot is that we can see that they have a bent shape, so we have bent radiators, which is absolutely not common for production cars. They are common in Formula 1, but they won't even be allowed in Formula 1 from 2022. And um, I don't know any other motorsport category that, that's using these bent uh, radiators. Production cars never use it because it's pretty expensive and it's quite impressive to see them here. It's a pretty nice arrangement in front with the uh, uh, top carbon fiber cover and with the crash box covering the gap between the two radiators and with one fan either side. I'm a bit surprised that they put these big radiators um, in this position at the front because they obstruct the flow through the front axle and it will reduce downforce. I'm thinking about other cars like the Valkyrie for example. Um, in this position the Valkyrie doesn't have any radiators and you have a free flow through the front axle and the Valkyrie has a real front wing arrangement which is not the case here. So the Valkyrie has a front wing with flaps and the Bugatti has a simple front wing which is only mounted in the center. I think you can adjust the height of it. It was stated by Bugatti that you can adjust it in three different positions. And for that function it makes sense that it's uh, not connected anywhere else. So even the Bugatti horseshoe is open and it will be interesting to see how stiff that component will be. Um, as predicted, it's a pushrod suspension. Um, the pushrod and the rocker have a nice flat shape. You can see the water pipes run below. You can also see the drive shaft in this picture. You can see the wheel speed sensor cable. I think it's the wheel speed sensor cable. And you can see the standard VW connector for it. The suspension members. You can see very nicely the shape of the rocker here. You can also see the ratio, which is approximately 1 to 2, so which means um, that the coilover is moving more than the wheel. Um, 
It's quite common on sports cars to ensure a sensitive reaction of the suspension to small wheel movements. The car moves less and it's a more stable aero platform. There's no heave spring as far as I can tell from what I can see here. Um, so the car will have a lot of downforce, but I don't think it will have crazy amounts of downforce. You can see the, um, the upper wishbone in this picture. And um, it looks like welded steel. Um, yellow you can see the main monocoque uh, with the pedal box and you can see an orange the forward carbon frame and uh, which is attaching the crash box. You can see the anti-roll bar which is quite massive. You can see the brake line. You can see the carbon pull rod to support the outer radiator corner. We can see more shots of that later. And you can see a little uh, hose running through here. This is the bleeder line from the upper radiator collector. You have this either side and we will also be able to see this in that shot here. So in this shot you can see how this bleeder line is running from the outside and then to the center. And you can also see the reservoir at this position. Um, we have the steering box. We can see the track rod in front of the front axle. We can also see the lower radiator connections and I asked myself how they connect the headlights. So it looks like this cable connects the front um, to the bodywork. So that's it for the front analysis. Please let me know how you liked it. If you are interested in any other parts of the car, please let me know. I will produce some more videos like this. And if you are interested in any other cars, please let me know and I can do some videos about this.